Hi, I'm David. And I'm Matthew. And welcome to Season 6, Episode 3 of The Pulse. We have a great show for you today, including the return of Generation Gap and an ad for an exciting new video game. But first, let's find out how Show Period is getting ready for 2000 Candles. Today, we will be interviewing cast members from 2000 Candles. Let's go. So I heard that you uh, wrote part of this show. I did. Uh, back in the year 1999, uh, me and a couple of friends were uh, working with a Christian theater company called Brookstone Performing Arts. And uh, one of those friends was Ince Choi. Ince, uh, some of you may know now, is the writer of Kim's Convenience on CBC TV. It's in its second season right now. And Janine Noyes, who's also a, she's a, a composer and a songwriter. She has a, a couple of albums out that you can actually purchase um, on iTunes. And she, uh, she and Ince and myself and another friend by the name of Tom Carson uh, put this show together. I can't give away too much, but uh, what I can tell you is that it's going to be fantastic. The music's really exciting. We've been working on it a lot, um, so everyone's really excited about that. It is a Christmas play, but it's sort of a, a different take on it, so I think it's going to be really, really great. Uh, could you guys tell us what the whole show's about? Um, basically, like the past 2,000 years of Christmases and like different perspectives on Christmas and history that has brought Christmas to today's. As for me, I'm Santa, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> and I'm also a kid from the Christmas ca pageant. Everyone should come see the show. Tonight is our last night that you can get tickets to see the show. You definitely do not want to miss this show. Um, it is sold out tomorrow night in the dinner theater, so tonight is your last chance to see it. Get your tickets, you can get them in the lobby today. Thank you. Thank you. For the word has become life. If you think you have a lot of homework, just listen to what it's like to go to school in China. John and Steve have the story. Today we will be talking about international students from China and we will be asking them questions about their old school and the school they are in right now. I can eat some snacks and dessert in the class and the teacher will not punish you. But in China, I even cannot drink water. I think it's homework because in China, we have a lot of homework every day. My old school the time is start so early. It's 7.30 in the morning. Um, we also over the school at maybe 6.30 or 6 o'clock. Um, we have many trips and it's really interesting. And the schools are big, it's almost a thousand students in the school. And one grade we have 12 classes, so each class we will have 40 students. We can make more friends and but in the school it's all Chinese, so it's better to communicate. The food was much cheaper. Being in my old school, I can study maybe more better because they have more homework. Our old school, maybe some subject like math, maybe it's difficult than this school. I'm homesick and the transportation is difficult. I wish I could drive. The weather is cold here, so I'm not really used to it, and I missed Chinese food very much. The culture is so much different than China, so uh, I'm not very used to the Canadian culture. For some subjects, I think the language is a big problem because it's, it is very difficult to understand. Uh, I think it's difficult to speak English all the time.
Last time Gen Z came in first place. Let's see who wins this time on Generation Gap. Generation Gap! Welcome to Generation Gap, the game that pits generation against generation. I'm your host, Javante Allen Sterling. Here are today's contestants. Representing the baby boomer generation, it's Mr. Groot. Boom! Representing the millennials, it's Mr. Hoving. And finally, representing Generation Z, we have Mary Hubert. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, what, what, is that? It's Hubert, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> now, before we begin, would you like to see what you'll be playing for? Yes. Yes. Today's prize is a Yamaha VK540 snow machine. Right. Seriously, yeah! Now that we know the prize, here's how Generation Gap works. All three players have a chance to answer each trivia question. However, each question is most relevant to only one of the three generations. That means each contestant has an advantage at least some of the time. There are also random questions that any contestant should know. Each question is worth one point. At the end of the game, the contestant with the most points is the winner. Okay, here we go with round one. First question. Who is the leader of the Green Party of Canada? Mr. Groot. Elizabeth Manley. No, the, the correct answer is Elizabeth May. <laughs> oh, so close. Autumn. Question number two. What Canadian female country singer is from Timmins, Ontario? Mr. Groot. Shania Twain. That is correct. I love Quest Shania Twain. Shoot. Question number three. What company do the famous Try Guys work for? The correct answer is BuzzFeed. Oh. Question number four. Who was the premier of Ontario immediately preceding Kathleen Wynne? The answer is Dalton McGinty. Question number five. What does SCUBA stand for? Scuba stands for self-contained <laughs> underwater breathing apparatus. Oh, we need Robinson here. Question Who's number that? six. Hagrid, Malfoy, and Weasley are from what series of books? Harry Potter. That is correct. Should have had that one. Question number seven. Here's my favorite one. What does dank mean? <clears throat> Mary. Like, like damp, but it also, like, in in like a modern context can mean like it, it, it's a good thing kind of no it's not mr hoving it's bad that is incorrect yeah no no it's yeah because like there's there's like obviously what's you don't dank know. mean yeah dank means i was gonna say that no it, it dang means damp but yeah it means not damp it means yeah the, in today's context dank means good okay cool awesome or fun i technically said that no that he, that he said, no, wait, it's not. <laughs> Question number eight. What is the name of our current prime minister's father? Oh, Mr. Elliot Trudeau. That is correct. Question number nine. What movie, star what movie starred Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio and was set in 1912? <laughs> Mr. Hogan. Titanic. Hmm? Titanic. That is correct. I Need to slam it a bit harder. Okay. <laughs> Number 10. What does AWOL stand for? Mr. Groot. Away without leave. Is that an acceptable answer? Absent That is incorrect. You are very close. It's absence without leave. Number 11. What hurricane devastated New Orleans in 2005? Mary. I didn't. Oh. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hoving. Katrina. That is correct. Number really? twelve. What did the company? What item did the company Saturn manufacture? <laughs> Mr. Hoving. A car. That is correct. That's the end of round one. We will be back later with round two. Let's see who's featured this time on Teacher of the Week. Thank you. 
We'll be right back after these important messages. Is there any more pizza? Yeah, there's one slice. Buy pizza at the school store. There's only one more juice box left. So, why are you trying to cover this up? What are you trying to hide? This is my job on the line. I can't lose another job. Who are you trying to protect? Please, this is really hard, okay? I don't want to be exposed. This is just, this is where I'm going to end this right now. This is what we agree to. My bad. After six years of waiting,
Great idea. Go make it. Magenta. Orange slices. Twelve eight three. This video was terrible. Do it again. You're dead. Oh my goodness. Pulse, the video game, available now, only on PlayStation, because the Xbox sucks. PlayStation. Where'd you get that brownie from? Don't mess, don't this, mess up. this up. Don't mess, don't this, mess up. this up. Come on, Adrian, Come on, Adrian. Don't, don't mess this up. up. Uh, I love you. I mean, do you want to go with me? I mean, Mark's Coffee Club. Um, I think the answer is no. Mark's Coffee Club. It's just that good. My mom says I'm cool. It's time now for Person on the Street, followed by the second half of Generation Gap.
Welcome back to Generation Gap. The current scores are one for the baby boomers, three for the millennials, and one for Generation Z. Let's get started with round two. What What's more expensive? Three dollars a gallon or two dollars a liter? Mary you they're married. <laughs> <laughs> um two dollars a liter. That is correct. Yes. Number fourteen. Which American rapper recently shaved his eyebrows? The answer is No 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 wait 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 wait. Ooh. It's She isn't got Oh it. too slow. No, I know the answer is triple X tenation <sighs> temptation. Yeah, and he's got the nah. Never was gonna get that. No. Number fifteen. Who was vice president under Barack Obama? The answer is Joe Biden. Number 16. Who were the last three contestants on Generation Gap? Mr. Hove. Michael Bodini, Mrs. Coy, and Mr. Vanderclute. That is correct. Number 17. What day of the week was September 11, 2001? Mr. Gru. Monday. Oh, you were very close. It was Tuesday. Ah. Number 18. In Overwatch, who is the large German knight with a warhammer? In what? In the game Overwatch, who is the large German knight with a warhammer? <coughs> this one's not very known. I'm not cool enough for that. The answer is Reinhardt. Number 19. What TV show is set at a company called Dunder Mifflin in s The Office. That is correct. <laughs> Number 20. In what year will Canada celebrate its 200th birthday? Mr. Green. No, what? 2067. That is correct. Number 21. What handheld game includes a pressable button, a pull handle, and a twisting crank? Mary. A... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mr. Hovang. Bop it? That is correct. <laughs> Number 22. What year did the iPod 4 release? Mary. 2010. Nope, that's incorrect. No! The correct answer is 2012. Really? Number 23. What does VCR stand for? Mr. Groot. Video cassette recorder. That is correct. Final question. What was the name of the sheep that was cloned in 1996? Mary. Sean. That is incorrect. <laughs> Her name is Dolly. Dolly, hi. That's the end of round two. It seems like we made a mistake. The iPod was made and was released in 2010, so that gives Generation Z two points, <coughs> tied with the baby boomers. Yeah. And that puts the millennials in the lead with six points. We have a clear winner. Congratulations, Mr. Hogan and the millennials. You are today's big winner. I'm Javante Allen Sterling, and, you're, and we'll see you next time on Generation Gap. Next, let's find out what different classes are up to around our school. And then it's dinner of the day. What are you doing in your class right now? Yeah, we are right now learning sophisticated graphs and exponential growth and rate of decay and the R-squared value of a chart. Uh, right now we're just wrapping up the Lord of the Flies unit, so uh, the kids are working on creative projects in response to the themes and the symbols. I am writing about instruments right now for music class. We're having a ping pong tournament. Um, we're searching about 
Jewish terms. Searching eco-friendly industries, right now I'm doing Ten Tree, a company that plants ten trees for every item they sell. What are you doing in your class right now? Um, we're learning logarithms with Mr. Templeton. Crystal, you are caring and compassionate. You're an amazing member of our homeroom, and we're going to miss you since you're in grade 12, but please come back and visit us. Why did you nominate Crystal? I nominated Crystal because she's such an amazing friend, and she's always there for me when I need it, and she, we always have like good times hanging out. Crystal is somebody uh, that really does a great job of overcoming challenges and adversities and she went through a pretty bad concussion last year and she worked extremely hard to just get caught up in school and um, to just get herself back to, uh, to being a great student. What's something we should know about her? She's very fun and outgoing and she tends to be a bit dramatic but that's okay because it's really funny too. And she definitely loves Niall Horan. What's your favorite thing about her? Um, she laughs at everything. When we go sledding in the winter, she just laughs so much and falls off the sled anytime. We, we're like there are times like in math class we just like jam out to music or something or like I, I was at her house once and we just went swimming in the pool and it was really fun. Well, that's the end of our show. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with another in just a few weeks. I'm David. And I'm Matthew. And you're watching... The, the Pulse. Pulse.